Sabah everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to check out a budget gaming laptop that's very powerful for the price point from MSI. This is the MSI Katana GF66. Now, I've had this laptop for about a month now, so thank you very much to MSI for allowing me to check it out for that duration and take it with me to Barcelona to cover MWC. So let's go ahead and not, well, let's not waste any time. Let's talk about all of the good things and the fact that you get way more than you pay for with the Katana GF66 from MSI. This is TK, let's check it out. There's a little not so known secret that most creators on YouTube love using gaming laptops as they're creating, uh, well, as they're creating content online. Not because gaming laptops are great just for gaming, but it's because they run the latest specifications and typically give us the best bang for the buck type of experience. Again, fastest processor, fastest SSD, fastest RAM, all of those things that we typically need to be able to produce content. And not only that, most of the time we have discrete graphic cards like Nvidia GPUs that enable us to actually render our content much faster than having internal or built-in graphics uh, like some laptops that are available on the market. Now, I know there is actually a specific category of laptop called the creator type laptops, and I do use one of them as well. But the reality of the matter is those laptops can typically go between $3,000 to $4,000, where what we're looking at today with the GF66 can be found somewhere under $1,000, and depending on the configuration, maybe a little bit more. The model that MSI sent to me is the Katana GF66 11UE-031. Now, this configuration is specific to this model, and there's a few others. I'll give you, of course, a link in the description below to be able to find some of the latest information. And the great thing about MSI laptops is that they're available almost everywhere. Uh, the configuration that I have here is featuring the 11th gen uh, CPU from Intel. This is an i7 core and the 11800H with an 8-core processor there, somewhere between 2.8 to 4.6 gigahertz as far as the clock speed. Uh, the chipset is the HM570, and that's going to be the one that's powering this entire system. The color is black. It's pretty much straightforward. A katana design, definitely very iconic. On the top, of course, we have the MSI logo. Now, this one is not in red. It's pretty much just etched into the back of the actual laptop. Uh, the display is a 15.6 Full HD IPS level, 144 hertz refresh rate display. So again, great for gaming. And when it comes down to editing, also we get the opportunity to be able to enjoy that content on this laptop. So this is one of the things I really like doing here, uh, not just for creating, editing and so on. I mean, the i7 is obviously way more powerful than you really need when it comes down to basically web browsing, uh, creating content as far as like editing documents, uh, Excel sheets, all of those things are gonna work perfectly fine. Uh, the overall performance is when you start looking at gaming. 144 hertz on a 1080p panel is going to give you that nice balance of detail and high performance. Let's say if you want to play Call of Duty the way I like to play Call of Duty on my device. Uh, and I got a chance to play Warzone and I was clocking in about 60 to 70 uh, frames per second. Of course, I jumped over to uh, Black Ops and I was able to jump in all the way over 100 to about 100 and 110. So depending on the games that you're playing, you're definitely going to get a very interesting approach here. The i7 is more than capable of handling all of those. Now, supporting all of this is the NVIDIA GPU. The discrete GPU that we have here is the 3060 laptop GPU. Now, what I love about this here is that we also have the ability of getting an overclock all the way to 1567 megahertz on the actual performance with 95 watt maximum graphics power uh, dynamic, you know, pull with dynamic boost. That's very, very nice. Now, we have six gigs of RAM on the uh, on the video card, that's GDR6, as opposed to also having 16 gigabytes of RAM on the actual laptop itself. For creating content to play in games, for me, when it comes down to actually storage and speed of RAM, this is always going to be very a very big factor. Now, one thing I will probably say is for creators, if you're thinking about picking up this laptop, I will recommend you picking up some additional RAM and maybe bumping it up to 32 gigs. It used to be where 16 gigabytes used to be more than enough, but when I was running my uh, 4K60 render while I was in MWC of the GT2 Pro, now that one didn't take too much time, but I noticed that my system was maxing out when it came to memory and it could definitely use a little bit more overhead or headroom. For gaming, I think 16 gigabytes is also pretty good, but I feel like 32 should be now the new standard. The reason why this is more of a budget laptop, again, because of the configuration that we get here, but you're able to customize that. So RAM upgrade is definitely something you can do on this system. Now, as far as storage, we do have that one terabyte NVMe SSD that is built in. We have gigabyte LAN and Wi-Fi 6, of course, for connectivity, as well as Bluetooth 5.1. Now, there's no SD card on here. That's unfortunately something that I wish would have been here, at least, or even a memory card. Now, we do have a 720p uh, webcam that's present here on the top part of the actual display. It's decent enough with good lighting, although if you do need something a little bit more professional, I do recommend either using your DSLR or a more professional level uh, you know, webcam to help you get better footage, especially when you're gaming, and also be able to get some better angles like side angle views uh, typically to what we do. 
Now, as far as connectivity or I.O., we have two three, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 and one USB 2.0 on this and a USB Type-C port on the right side. Now, this is really nice because we also have the ability of using the Type-C, as I'll show you guys with my setup in the office here. As far as ports, we do have an HDMI port supporting 4K 60 frames per second, which was really nice because I was powering my 4K monitor here in the studio. Um, audio ports, we have one audio port, of course, a 3.5mm three, uh, 3 headphone jack, and that's present on the right side. Uh, the power brick that we have here is 180 watts, and of course, three cell battery to 50, uh, 53 uh, watt hours capacity rating. Um, overall, the weight on the actual laptop, even though it's technically 4.6, 4.63 pounds, it's actually on the lighter side. And that's something that MSI laptops are known for. They're typically not known to be very heavy. The material is the user usually more on the lighter end. Now, what that provides us is the ability of having better thermal control because there's not a lot of things blocking the air. So the cooler system that we have in here is actually very, very nice. And what I really like is it's called the Cooler Boost 5. It gives us the ability of uh, pushing all of the air or all of the hot temperature from the actual laptop all the way through the back with the back vents that we have in there. So the benefit there that if it's sitting on, a on the table, it has enough of a rise to pull in a lot of the air from the outside environment and then pushing it through and again, uh, allowing the heat to go out. As you see there, most of the heat is concentrated to the top part of the keyboard. So when you're playing, there's not a lot of heat right beneath your fingers giving you those concerns when you're playing with a game. Obviously, you wanna use an external mouse and if you're using the keyboard on the actual uh, laptop, that's gonna give you that experience. So very happy with that. It does definitely get a little bit loud when you're playing games and rendering but that's to be expected it's dissipating the heat um, if you're using it in general usage it's actually pretty decent and the decibels are very low almost un you won't even notice it uh, but at the end of the day if you are going to play a game just be aware there always go there is going to be some fan sound and it's there intentionally So since we're talking about gaming and the keyboard and the setup that we have in here, uh, the keyboard itself is backlit. It is a red light, typical to what we see from MSI. Uh, there's no configurations of being able to change it, but you are able to change the dimming level, as I'm showing you guys right now, uh, by just holding the function key and the dimming option. There are different shortcut keys as well on the top for volume, for webcam and uh, touchpad, a lot of things that you can customize in there. And of course, there's also the onboard app, you know, customization app that we have from MSI. And that one's definitely very, very nice. Uh, one thing I will say, this keyboard is a slightly different configuration than most laptops, and that's because the number pad is actually kind of squished in on the right side, providing us a slightly different experience on the right. It takes about a day or so to get customized to or accustomed to, and at the end of the day, I think it's definitely very nice that we still have the number key there without having to actually condense the entire set keyboard. It's actually a very interesting way MSI is doing it here. So what do I think about this laptop? I've been talking about a lot of specifications, configurations, so on. Uh, for me, I ended up using it for both gaming and for content creation. During my trip to Barcelona, this was something that I really enjoyed. First, the fact that it was a lightweight laptop helped provide me a not so heavy kind of a backpack when I was walking around. Uh, the fact that it has a 1080p resolution wasn't a really big issue for me because overall, as a, at a 15.6 inch display, even if I had a 4K display, it would still be a small kind of a window to work on. So working on something that small wasn't a big issue for me. And again, I was traveling, so this was not going to be my normal setup. What I loved about it is when I come back to the office or the studio here, as I'm showing you guys right now, I have my actual setup here built in where I have the laptop sitting in there opened up, connected to a dock that I, I use. It's a USB dock. Uh, and through that, I was using a display port to run a 4K 60 frames per second secondary display. And that's my big monitor that I use. Um, as you know, 15.6 is a great uh, interface when it's close up. But for me in the studio where I am, the laptop would be sitting about three feet away from my face and I needed something to give me uh, better visibility. So this handled it like a champ. Um, editing video was definitely not an issue. Um, for example, my video for the GT2 Pro, which was roughly about 15 minutes or so, maybe 16 minutes, uh, rendered 4K 60 frames per second in about nine minutes using uh, obviously Premiere with hardware decoding. Now it did level, uh, well, it did basically uh, leverage both the CPU and the GPU. It's not running fully on the GPU, but it was definitely enough for me to be able to get a render pretty quickly and get it out. Uh, I will mention though that my timeline is not necessarily the most complicated one, but scrubbing at 4K, using that and using the external display, all of those things worked really nice. And of course, running the headphone jack, this is on my monitoring uh, you know, speakers here in the office, is also definitely a very good configuration. On the go, this pretty much was the exact same situation. I used an external mouse with the keyboard and the shortcuts that I had and everything was working great. Uh, gaming, again, as I said, about 110 or so in Call of Duty uh, Black Ops. In, uh, in Warzone, I was kind of capped around 60 to 70 frames per second, but I think I need to be able to customize a few things. Again, the display can go all the way up to 144 hertz. 
Now, from what I've been using and what you should expect from a gaming laptop, I think out of the box, this is pretty much set at the right level. The 3060 with the i7 is definitely a good combination. The 16 gigs of RAM, I probably would have loved it being around 32, but I understand the price point. And again, this is something you can upgrade on your own later on, maybe even do it at a slightly cheaper price than having it built in. The SSD, one terabyte, absolutely right size. And of course, you can always um, use external storage. You have USB 3.2 in there and of course, some uh, well, USB Type-C as well that gives you the ability of actually enjoying external storage if you need to. But I feel like that one terabyte size is the right way to go. Anything smaller than that may have been a little bit, um, I would see basically a limiting factor because as you can imagine, um, Call of Duty as well as Black Ops, if I'm not mistaken, was like around 250 gigs just in just the install files themselves. That's how big these games are. So just keep in mind, you want the storage and you want it to be the fastest. NVMe is literally the one that you want to go. So I'll give you guys a few links in the description below. I've been very happy and extremely sad actually of having to return this back to MSI, but I do want to say thank you very much for allowing me to check out the GF66. And of course, experiencing budget laptop gaming uh, at, at its best, literally. The 3060 is a supremely well-balanced video card for production as well for gaming. And of course, the display and MSI's technology in here definitely helps very nicely. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next video.